Welcome to Loco Gringo, Mexico, where we can take you beyond the usual on your vacation. Each week, we talk with amazing locals who know the Riviera Maya and Yucatan like only locals can. Get real tips to real places. Insights on the local scene, culture, and cuisine from a local's perspective. So pour yourself a margarita, mezcal, or tequila. Grab yourself a comfy chair, and let's get the show going. Hi, everyone. So glad to have you with us today. This is Kay Walton, and I'm with Loco Gringo Mexico. Love that you tuned in. Hey, we're going to be speaking with Gil Dennis. Now, Gil came originally from France. He's been in the area for over 10 years. And he just, um, you can, oh, he's a joy to talk to and a joy to listen to. He's very interesting. He has his own business, um, playaprivatetours.com, and he came and moved his family here back in 2007. So he's going to share a bit about his story and about some of the favorite places that he recommends when you come down here to visit and some tips to make sure that you have a fabulous experience. This episode is brought to you by Buy Playa. You know, lots of people ask us for information and help when it comes to real estate, whether they're looking for retirement, an investment property, or maybe they're looking to relocate to the area. And we refer them over to our friends at Buy Playa. The folks at Buy Playa we've known for years, and they'll make sure that you, the buyer, are fully protected and informed when it comes to buying real estate. So if you're looking to buy a piece of paradise, check out our friends at buyplaya.com. Jill, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for calling me, Kate. Hey, no, thank you so much for being on your show. I was thrilled when I yelled, said, oh, you have to talk to Jill. He's got a great story. And I think I could be wrong, but I think you're our first guest who's from France. And I'm, I'm thrilled to have the French contingent represented here. And um, and you've been in the Riviera. You moved from France to the Riviera Maya in, in what year? Uh, actually, I moved about 10 years ago in, uh, 2007. in 2007. Um, I am very honored to be the, French, uh, the, the first French uh, on the show. Sorry about my accent and the mistake I might it's say fabulous. the language. Not, it's, it's not perfect yet. I'm still working on it. Uh, yes, actually, I arrived uh, uh, in 2007, so 10 years ago, uh, and I arrived from uh, France. Um, I wouldn't, actually, I, knew for, I discovered for the first time the Mayan Riviera uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and, and especially Playa del Carmen, I really f- felt in love with it. And uh, I knew since a long time that if I one day I would have to move, I would love to, uh, to, to come and live here. And finally, in 2007, after being, uh, I think we were on the holidays in Morocco, uh, we saw the sun. And then we decided with the kids and the whole family, OK, we have to live under the sun. So we left everything behind in France and uh, moved, uh, moved to Mexico in two months. And we found a little business. And yeah, that's how, how, how the, our history started. Wow, that's amazing. So you came originally on vacation. Did you just come on one trip and then said, up, oh, we're moving? Or did you come back a couple times before you moved to the area? No, actually, I, I, came, I came several times, I think it's like six or seven times. I've also been to other parts of the world. But uh, when I had to take the decision to move uh, with the whole family, um, if I would have been alone, maybe I would have, also liked another place, you know, like uh, probably Indonesia. I love Southeast Asia. But uh, with kids and uh, with a family, Playa del Carmen, Mexico was the perfect, was the best spot ever. Just because there, we have schools, we have hospital. It's very friendly. We live under the sun. The city is large enough, uh, not not too small. It's it's the perfect size. Uh, plus, plus my kids learn Spanish and English at school. Uh, they, we speak French at home, so they they get to learn languages that are going to be very use, useful for their whole lives. Would not now, have ha- been the same thing. Sorry. How ma- no, 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 no. How many kids do you have? How many children? You mean known? No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, just, just, just two boys. Uh, one is 11 years old and uh, the older one just turned uh, 14 years old three days ago. Wow. What a wonderful opportunity they have to, to have, um, uh, uh, to grow up in Mexico and yes, and, and have the, the language skills and everything, um, from uh, as children, I think it's an amazing, um, opportunity for children these days. 
of course for them it's uh what is cool for them is that it feels natural. You know, they have half of the lessons in Spanish at school, half in English, and we speak French at home. Uh, and they grew up here. When we when we first arrived here, they were two and four years old. So they, they barely remember that they were living in France before. And what is fun, actually, is that their very first language is Spanish. Normally, the rule is that at home, the, the, the official language is French. But I kind of lost the battle. Like when when they when they talk to us, my wife and I, they speak uh, French. But when they talk to each other, they speak Spanish. Oh, that's super cool. Now, when you were deciding on an area, did you just know yes, it was going to be Playa del Carmen and not Cancun, um, which also has a lot of nice schools and everything? Yeah, actually, it was uh, I it, I preferred really Playa del Carmen because uh, still now, but e- even more ten years ago, it was way smaller than Cancun. You know, we we still have here, even if it has grown a lot, we still have this village ambience. You know, like everybody uh, know each other. It's a uh, it's 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 really a, a great spot for that. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's not not like this in Cancun, you know. Plus, in Cancun, the touristic area is really se- completely separate from the from the the area where people live, which is not the case in Playa. Actually, we have the beach is next door, and and people who live there and people who come on vacation are mixed. And this is really what makes the charm of it. It's not like a you, you as a tourist, you're not park in a in 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 a big in a big tourist place. I would say. No, I think Playa is a very nice, a very nice opportunity for people that are visiting the area that they're they're not separate, that they get to be part of the local culture and the local vibe that's happening. And I think it's part of what makes Playa del Carmen such an attractive uh, destination. Exactly, you're completely right. That's that's, that's uh, super heteroclite. I don't know how to say that in English. There are people from all nationalities from everywhere, and yeah, that that's what makes that Playa is cool. When you, you you meet a lot of people here. It's it's a, it's it's amazing. It's fabulous. I love it. I always say this. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I, I always say the same thing. If if someone would give me today the opportunity uh, to live wh- wherever I want in the world and give me the money that goes with that, I could not pick another place. You know, it's not it's not perfect because we all have our things to do. We all have our bills to pay. Everything we have to work. But come on, the place is awesome. It's it's. Uh, it's it's a really good spot to do. Now, when you said you said that when you came back when you came over in two thousand seven to move, that you found a little business. Was this a new business, or did you buy an existing business? And what type no. of business was it? Actually, my first motivation was to leave here. Then I had to find something to do because uh, I would not live here without working. So just to first to get uh, used to Spanish. Because when I first moved here, I didn't speak a word of Spanish. Actually, we 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 uh, we put it, um, an ice cream store on the sixth street that I kept for about ten months just to uh, familiarize myself with the administration, yeah. with uh, with um, how things goes here, how to get a work permit, all kind of that. And then uh, after that, a year after living here, I bought the dive center in Playa Car. So it was already existing. Uh, about the Reef Playa Car Dive Center that is still doing uh, really well because I really wanted to to join my passion, with, which was scuba diving and, and my job. I kept this uh, dive center for a couple of years and finally sold it in, uh, I don't remember the year, but about six years ago uh, to dedicate myself to, to something else. No, I'm doing private tours. Beautiful. Now, in owning a dive center, because I I came down and my first job was to be in a in a dive center or dive shop. Um, were you a dive instructor already, or did you just come in as a dive master, or did you, how how did you get involved with now now you're owning your own dive shop? How did how did that evolve in terms of your dive career? Uh, actually, I've been passionate about diving since. Uh, 20 years, I, I did my Discover Scuba Diving here in Playa del Carmen. <laughs> and awesome. then, then I traveled all around the world, not all around the world, but in several places uh, to to uh, like do new certifications with the INTD, with uh, the French Federation of Diving. So in Indonesia, in Egypt, in Thailand. And, um, and I really wanted to, uh, yeah, to, to have my, di- my own dive center. When I first arrived here, I uh, was not instructor yet. I, that's the very first thing I did. And then um, 
then I bought the dive center. Uh, so when I bought it, I was like a one-year-old instructor. And that was hard because I was doing everything. You know, I was doing the administration, uh, selling, welcoming the guests, and also diving. So that was really a lot of job. I, I liked it, but actually I, I discovered that I prefer scuba diving as a patient more than as a work, as a job. I, I totally agree. I absolutely mm -hmm. agree. I still dive now on, on, on my work. I'm doing private diving in, in cenotes and, uh, and in the sea, but it's, I, still, I like it now because it's just a little part of my job. That's not all. So now you have, have you always been in diving? Because now I know you have a private tour business. And yes. was, this an, was this an evolution or how, how did you get into now doing these, your private tours? It was a change, actually. I the, the the diving center was not super big, but I had about fifteen employees, and uh, I was uh, spending my day fixing problems. You know, it was a lot of job. I was happy because I was working by the sea. I was diving, but it was a lot of stress, and uh, so I finally decided to sell it for that reason, and to find a job that. It's more my personality, I would say. Uh, I I also sold it because I'm not really a leader, you know. I uh, I can do it, but I'm not very happy to have employees, and so I did that just to start to work alone. Now, what I'm doing, I do it alone. I just have a freelancers that work for me, like drivers or, or other guides sometimes, uh, but no one is my employee, and it's it feels much much better, really less. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. It's uh, it's less pressure. So, what type of tours or what types of services do you or do you um, offer to people who who are looking for a special experience? What may what really gives you that? I can't find the word for it. But what? Why? 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 Why would? I want to come and be in what type of experience or benefit can I have if I'm being out with you one-on-one -on -one versus just going out with some of these, you know, there's all these like really big groups and stuff out there. But I know me, I know me personally, I like the more intimate type experience, but what, what's your kind of your specialty and, and passion uh, there? Uh, actually by my, my specialty, my idea, my basic idea, uh, seeing all the, all the big groups and everything, uh, you know, uh, all these people mix that don't know each other. Uh, I saw that I wanted to receive people here in the Riviera Maya as if they were my best friends, you know, and show them the surroundings and what I know as if they were my best friends. And very often, uh, yeah, we, 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 we end up being friends, you know, uh, means it's, I, I'm more type like a, I'm a guy, but I'm also a concierge. Uh, I receive people, and but my service do not stop at, with the tours when the tour is over. For example, uh, happens it happened many many times that I had to take people to the doctor because they were sick, or have dinner with them at the restaurant after the tour because they're really nice people. Is that, that was a kind of a idea, and then the job it's uh, it's tours, all kind of tours. I do scuba diving, diving in the cenotes. Uh, I uh, also uh, take people to all the archaeological sites. Uh, we do snorkelings in different spots. It's a, it's it's a quite a complete job. It, and what is really fun for me is that I get to do something different every day, and I get to meet new people every day, and I love people. So it's amazing. I feel oh, very blessed. That's awesome. My the, the 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 hardest part part in my job is to try to convince myself every single day that I'm working. I feel on holidays every day. <laughs> it's really good. And I tell my guests, and, and I tell my guests, I'm joking, of course, but I tell them, hey, can you realize you pay me to do that? It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Some days it's like too much fun. It's, it's you got to like pinch, you know, pinch ourselves. It's like, really? Is this really our life? And it's awesome. It's a great, uh, it's a great experience. Yeah, you're, you're completely right. It's, it's really great experience. It, I, I, I don't get, um, how, how do you say that? I don't get tired of that, you know? I, even if I do the same tour three days in a row, I still love it. I'm like, wow, I'm showing in this, you know, that's cool, it's refreshing, it's nice what I see on the water, it's, it's perfect, it's beautiful, I, I love it, I really love it. Now, we talked to a, uh, quite a few people who have been in the dive 
industry or the dive services over over the course of the last year on our show. And if you were to describe to someone about going and visiting a cenote, what makes it such a special experience in your opinion? Wow. Um, what makes it super special, it's, uh, it's a mixture of everything, actually. It's the, it's the fact that it's really beautiful. It's the fact that uh, it's, uh, those are sanctuary for the Mayans. You know, all the Mayan communities were always living close to Cenote because it was a source of fresh water. Uh, it's the history of the Cenotes. I don't know if I can explain that <laughs> because it's, it's a long history, but it's the fact that uh, we are doing archaeology there that we found uh, in Sakatun, we found uh, Eva de Naron, which is supposed to be the first American uh, in, in the continent, a skeleton of 13,500 years. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's really amazing. And it's, um, and yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great experience. The water is crystal clear and yeah, that, uh, I, 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 I can't really explain why I love the cenotes, but they are, and they're all different. All the shapes are different. Some are caverns, cenotes, some are, uh, uh like open air, some are completely circled. Uh, yeah, they're all different. And do you find on your excursions with guests that, People can enjoy them. I know a lot of times people have the misconception, oh, you need to be a cave diver or a scuba diver to be able to enjoy them. But I think people miss the experiences that just to go in the jungle and to be in a cenote, you don't need to have, you don't need all that equipment or all that training to appreciate the no, no, experience sure. and the beauty. You're completely right. You, 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 you know, as I do that, we have many, many different kinds of solitude. And, and actually, be, before, before I take people on tour, we always talk and we, I, will, I will always adapt the cenote to what they want to see. You know, like if they have young kids, uh, we're going to go to an open air cenote where we have light the whole time. If they want to discover a little bit more, then we're going to go like to a cavern cenote, like Dos Ojos, for example, which is a very nice. Um, um, and we're going to see bats. We're going to be a little bit in the dark. And for the one who wants like big adventure, a little something a little bit more hidden and more like feel the thrill, I will go to uh, Rio Sagrado. Uh, that's a, uh, how do you say that in English? I don't know, Rio Sagrado. Um, the sa uh, Sacred River? The Sacred River in, in close to Labnaha, where we are in the dark. I, I call it... Um, I call it full cave snorkeling. We're in the dark for 40 minutes with lamps. There's bats, a lot of stalactites, stalactite. It's, it's a big adventure. It's nice. So, so yeah, uh, to, to resume that, there's a cenote for everyone. So we talk about the, the, the feelings of people before, and we always find the, the good one. And at the end of the day, everyone yeah, got his own experience of, uh, of his own cenote, I would say. Everybody who lives down here, we all have our little favorite spots and everything. Um, do you have a Do you have a favorite ruin site that's just like your your favorite? Favorite, uh, I love Koba because because uh, when we get there very early in the morning, very often we we got to see the the wild in the jungle. You know the wildlife. We see uh, spider monkeys. Uh, we see a lot of stuff. I, I like Koba because you still can climb on the pyramid. It's on the shade. It's a, it's a bike ride. So I think Koba is a, is a very nice spot. Nice. I, I would say, yeah, Koba is my favorite, favorite archaeological site. Uh, plus, it's, a, it's from the post from the pre-classic and classic period, so it got a lot to tell. No, it has a it has amazing history, and it's it's really a special a special um, day to go out and, and be at Koba and to be by that lagoon that's there by the entra the entrance. Um, it certainly is worth is worth the the drive out, and I think the drive out from from like Tulum to Koba is a very it's a nice little. A nice little drive to go through the little pueblos, Macario Gomez, yeah. and everything to just kind of get a, a little glimpse into life off of the main drag on the uh, on on the main coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, you're completely right. And I really think yeah, going to actually each archaeological site. The very good thing is leave, start early in the morning, be the first one there. You're gonna get an amazing experience. You feel like you you own the site. It's 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 unbelievable. It's beautiful. Gil, you know, I know all of us have our hearts here in the Yucatan Peninsula for so many reasons. Um, my question to you is, 
you I know you're very well traveled. You traveled around the world. Is um, do you have any other favorite places in Mexico, either that you've been to that you want to return to, or places you just want to check out that are on your bucket list? Um, yeah, I would I would love to know all Mexico. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have time to travel a lot uh, on Mexico. Uh, I did uh, three, three or four times to uh, Chiapas. I really love Chiapas. Uh, it's uh, it's the, the 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 surroundings are very different uh, uh, than here. You know, here it's completely flat. The the Yucatan Peninsula in Chiapas there are mountains. Uh, there are very nice villages. It's very colorful. I I loved it. And I'm also I could not live there, but I have to say that as a tourist, I love Mexico City. I was there with all the family uh, like a month and a half ago. Uh, we got to uh, to see the the sun rise. On a balloon on top of a Teotihuacan pyramid. Wow! It, it's it's a it's a marvelous city. I I, I really love it. It's uh, yeah, so much people living here, so much things to do. I but again, as a tourist, I love my life here in Playa Carmen. But yeah, I think Mexico has have a lot to offer. I wish one day I could visit Mexico more. Unfortunately, uh, like you were saying at the beginning of the show, I'm French, and uh, I'm a little bit. Uh, uh, condamné. I don't know how to say that. My sentence is uh, very often to go to see the family <laughs> in France when I have opportunity to travel. And where and where in France is your family? I am from uh, Normandy. That's uh, on the oh. Channel, right in front of uh, of England, mm-hmm. about two hundred kilometers northwest of Paris. Well, that is. It's nice that you get to go back um, for the special family occasions and holidays from time to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they and they visit me. Uh, they visit me very often. Actually, I I prefer when they visit me than than to go back there. I still like friends for sure, but uh, I gain too much weight when I go there. So I'd rather <laughs> stay here. Oh yeah, those French wines and cheeses. I'm sure oh. um, can get to be a bit much on the waistline. Yeah, but you you can't believe it. I actually I love French food. I think it's. Yeah, everybody knows that French food, food is really good. I love it. When I get there, I eat a lot of the food I like. And you can't believe it. After 10 days, I'm missing Mexican food. You know, I'm missing the specialties from, from here. I'm missing to have my Dos Equis Lager uh, sometimes. It's, it's one, one gets you. I think we are, we are very lucky to live in, in a country where the food is, is awesome. It's really good. I love Mexican food. So, and so, so I so do I. Do you have a favorite dish that you really is like your ultimate favorite here? Uh, relleno negro. It's uh, yeah. the relleno negro. It's a uh, it's a uh, pavo. Pavo. It's a uh, turkey uh, that is uh, cooked uh, with kind of burned um, uh, chilies. It's and it's served with a uh, with a uh, hard eggs. How do you say that? Hard boiled um, egg. Hard boiled egg. Uh, when you look at it, it do not look really good because it's uh, negro means black in the, in in Spanish, and it's the sauce is really black, but the taste is awesome. Uh, there's a there's a place in uh, in uh, Tulum. I don't know if you've been there. It's named Honorio. When you go in the direction of uh, of Muyil of of Belize, I would say, yep. uh, on the second traffic light on the left, there's a very little spot. I take the, I take my tourists there sometimes because they're really mixed with the locals, you know, nobody get there except the drivers and the police and, and everybody who lives in Tulum who know the spot go there, but not so many tourists. And there you hit all the, the Mayan specialties. You hit cochinita pibil, that is a pork, uh, cooked, uh, with a spice named achiote orange juice and it's cooked in banana leaves on the ground so cochinita uh, pibil it's really good it's really melty uh, there's this famous uh, relleno negro that i was talking about and they also do the pork shuk. those are like a, a it's kind of grilled pork mixed with a sauce and the uh, lechon which is um, kind of cochinita but without the the achiote, uh, spice it's a, it's it's really very good if you you have option to go there one time it's named taqueria honorio it's awesome okay We'll have to. I'll have to check that out for sure. And I, and I just had lanchon for my very first time. I was in Merida a few weeks ago, and it was delicious. Yeah. Oh, it's yep. delicious. Yeah, it's really delicious. I love it. Gil, question for you: If you had th- three recommendations or tips that you would give to people who want to visit the area so they have an authentic experience, what would they be? 
Uh, wow, uh, I would say the very first one would be get out of the hotel. Get out of the hotel. Like if you if you book in a you know all inclusive resort, uh, their job is to try to keep you inside of the hotel so that you don't spend your money somewhere else. If you dare getting out of the hotel, it's not dangerous at all. Plus you get you'll you'll spend much less money than inside of the hotel, and you'll get to see very nice stuff. Second recommendation. Oopsie, sorry. That's okay. We all have dogs. Second, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> second, uh, se- second rec- recommendation would be probably um, talk with the Mexicans. A lot of them, if, if you go in the center in Playa del Carmen, a lot of them are really good at English. They speak really good English and talk with them. They're going to they, they're gonna give you really good tips, really good advice. To, they're going to give you very good restaurants and yeah, so yeah, my my basic re- re- recommendation would be yeah, do it there, rent a car, move. It's safe, you know. It's uh, nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. So uh, we have to change this this image because people are saying that it's dangerous here. It's not. You can you can do your whatever you would do in your own country. And one more tip. You got one more. Uh, one more. Let me. Wow. Well, if you have two more, I'll take two more. But you know. And no, actually, I'm I know it's been a long more, day for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, yeah. That. No. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Disco- discover the things that 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 we have here. There. Do it. Um, yeah. Go to the cenotes. Uh, uh, go to the archaeological sites. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Discover all what the. All the, what the area can, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I'm trying to sing, but um, no, I don't think so. I don't see something else. Well, Gil, let me ask you how, if people want, to, after hearing you today and they want to have that incredible experience, whether that's going and eating down in Tulum or go, being out at a cenote or over at Koba and that, how can people contact you and get in touch to ask more questions and to get more information about um, the adventures and services that you guys offer? Oh, thank you for asking me that. Okay. Um, actually, I work only through the internet. I have a website which is www.playaprivatetours.com. And here I present myself. I give uh, kind of examples of tours. And, um, and yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it. And then after, I, I kind of customize the tours for every person, you know, like according if you're on honeymoon, if you're with family, with young kids, uh, you're older, if you want to do sports or not. I always try to find the, the tour that fits everyone, you know, everyone in the group. Um, that yeah, and, that that that's how how you can find me. And you uh, and you, oh, you do kiteboarding too. I don't mean to interrupt, but I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah, forget that, you do kiteboarding as well, right? Yes, I I used to do it more than now. I'm I'm working in a in a very close uh, partnership with a kiteboarding school where where I did my my kiteboarding instructor. Actually, maybe you 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 might uh, you might talk with Dylan Schufelt, uh, who runs this this kite school. He's an incredible person. He's a Canadian who grew up here in Mexico. He's so he's having this great uh, kiteboarding school, and uh, so I work closely with them. I used to teach more kiteboarding than than I do now. I don't have that much time, but. Um, but yeah, sometimes when, when people ask, I, I, I do that. Beautiful. Well, we'll make sure that on today's show notes on our website that we'll have links over to Gil's um, website, playaprivatetours.com, his email address. We'll talk about some of these great places that Gil mentioned. And then, of course, if you have any questions and you can't reach him, you can always contact me, sk at localgringo.com, and I'll hook you up with Gil. Gil, thank you so much. Thank you very much for uh, calling me. That was really cool. Nice to uh, yeah, to share my experience of the Mayan Riviera, and uh, you, I hope one day you'll talk to me about yours. Ah, uh, well, let's we'll ha- let's do that someday over um, a cold Dos Equis. How's that? Oh, perfect! I would love that. Perfect, <laughs> perfect deal. <laughs> thank All you right. very much for calling me, Kate. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful evening, and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening too. 
Well, are you inspired now to move down here? Do you want to move down here and have a little place of your own? Well, then you need to talk to our friends at Bi Playa. You know, they have a friendly and knowledgeable international staff. They speak lots of languages, and they are known as being a buyer's agent. Well, what does that mean? That means they are only going to show you and sell you properties they know that have escrituras, and escritura is a title. And it's part of their due diligence to make sure the title is clear, there's no liens, and that the person who's selling the property is actually the owner. Bi Playa works with lawyers that specialize in fideicomisos, which is a Mexican trust. You may have heard of it already before. And they can address things such as capital gains problems immediately and right up front so that you have no surprises along the way to closing. So contact our friends at Bi Playa at buyplaya.com. Well, before you take off, I just want to remind you that we have some wonderful travel guides available to you. They are on Amazon and Google Play. Also, if you are traveling with your family, we have some people here on staff, Katie and Scott in particular, who have kids, and they're always willing to share some of the great family experiences that they have and can recommend some great places you can take your children while you're visiting the Riviera Maya. Until next week, everybody, hasta la vista. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe. For links, show notes, and more information, head on over to LocoGringo.com or give us a call toll-free at 800-478-0081. Porque se tragó la luna, estaba enferma la rana, su madre soba que soba de dos de pluma la panza, pensó ranita que luna era una toronja blanca. Y aunque la luna es de leche, la leche estaba cortada.